The old priest worked hard all his life. He never imagined that one day, God would come to him in person. After receiving God's blessing, the priest astonishingly returned to the appearance of a 30-year-old. What secret lies behind this? It all begins with the priest's hometown, on a distant island in the sea. There stood a decaying little town. Once, this place was rich in marine resources, and thrived for a time. However, as time passed, and the population dwindled, the town gradually fell silent. Now only a little over a hundred residents remained. Holding on, every day, two boats served as lifelines, connecting the island to the mainland, sustaining the daily lives of the residents. One day, Jack returned to the town. His mother ran to him with joy on her face, because Jack had caused in a car accident, resulting in the unfortunate loss of a young life. Therefore, he was sentenced to four years in prison. This guilt felt like a shackle, that lingered in his heart. In prison, he often saw the girl. Jack understood, he could not continue living outside, so he chose to return to his hometown. Jack returned to the land that once gave him warmth. He hoped to find a way to find relief here. Along with him returned, there is also a mysterious man. He carried a strange box. The man went directly to the nun's residence. Soon after, a faint knocking sound came from the box. The man hesitated briefly before opening the box. At that moment, the town's tranquility was quietly shattered. Night fell, and several young people gathered in the wild to drink and chat. After drinking for a while, the group began to talk about the strange legends that circulated in the town. Suddenly, a piercing cat's cry interrupted the conversation. They thought it was the sound of wild cats fighting. However, a boy inadvertently caught sight of eyes glimmering in the darkness that quickly vanished. This made him feel a bit frightened. As the crowd dispersed, a cat quietly approached. Its companion lay silently nearby, having long lost its life. On this quiet night, Jack finally reunited with his family. Although his past life was full of twists and turns, his mother's acceptance gave him comfort. He opened his heart to his family, Jack requesting his parents to accompany him to church the next day to seek divine redemption and forgiveness. The next morning, with his parents by his side, Jack stepped into the church. There, he happened to meet his childhood friend, Aaron. She turned her head casually, and when their eyes met, subtle emotions are revealed in the eyes. At that moment, the priest walked up to the pulpit and introduced himself as Paul. He had come to replace the old priest. Plot. This time, he would preside over the town's mass. After the service, Father Paul quickly won the hearts of the townspeople. Soon after, Jack found Aaron. The person before him was a far cry from the girl he remembered. The rebellious and lively spirit she once had was gone. During their conversation, Aaron revealed she has only recently returned here. Aaron's life in the big city had not gone well. Her marriage was unhappy. Her husband was an alcoholic and abusive. Aaron had reluctantly chosen to escape back to the town. She discovered she was pregnant as soon as she returned. Although Aaron had once sworn to Jack that she would never return to this town, but now it seems that it seemed fate had played a cruel joke on her. She returned to this place once again. Jack also shared his experiences. Aaron saw him deeply entrenched in guilt and offered him encouragement. She hoped Jack could overcome his troubles soon. The sky gradually darkened, and a storm swept through the town. Jack saw a figure through the window, seemingly struggling in the downpour. He immediately called his family over, but the figure disappeared. Jack was convinced it was the old priest. Plot. His family found it hard to believe, because earlier in the day, Father Paul had said that Plot was recuperating on a distant continent. To confirm he hadn't seen wrong, Jack went out in the rain to chase after him. He called out loudly to the figure, but when the figure heard Jack's shout, he seems to be running faster. It vanished in an instant. Jack wondered if he had seen it incorrectly. Perhaps it was just someone passing by. He hurried home in a hurry. The next morning, after the storm had ravaged, seagulls gathered in the sky, as if celebrating the rebirth after the disaster. However, when Jack's family reached the beach, the sight before them shocked them. The beach was covered with numerous cat corpses. This quickly attracted the attention of the entire town. After careful examination, people found that the cat's necks appeared to have been bitten through by some kind of beast. People speculated that it might be an attack by sharks or ospreys to prevent disease or plague. They decided to burn the cats. Meanwhile, Paul visited the home of Dr. Green. He learned that her mother was unable to attend mass due to health reasons. He stated that he had come specifically to hold a mass for her. Paul entered the house and Dr. Green's mother mistook him for the old priest. Dr. Green quickly clarified that this was the new priest. Paul, after Dr. Green stepped out, Paul looked at the woman like an old friend and offered her some holy water. 
He told her it was a gift from God. On the other side, since Jack returning home, Jack felt that life had lost its purpose. This town was quite peaceful, with no heavy burdens of work. The residents lived leisurely and comfortably. Perhaps it was an ideal place to retire. However, for young people with dreams, this place might seem too dull. While strolling down the street, Jack once again ran into Aaron. They chatted warmly, reminiscing about some trivial matters from their childhood. At night, Jack found himself alone in a small boat in his dreams. This girl died because of him, like a ghost lingering in his mind, like an inescapable nightmare. Jack could never find peace. Meanwhile, outside the town, there seemed to be a mysterious figure circling in the night sky. A passerby accidentally heard strange noises coming from a house. Curious, he went to check it out. He after shouting twice, no one responded. He thought the townspeople were playing a joke on him. However, a pair of bright eyes suddenly appeared in the depths of the dark house. Since Father Paul arrived in this town, he seemed to carry some kind of mysterious power. The townspeople eagerly participated in the mass. On this day, Paul approached Lisa, a girl who had been paralyzed for many years. He held the sacred object symbolizing divine grace in his hand. In the anticipation of everyone, he was ready to hand it directly to Lisa. But, unexpectedly, he took a few steps back. Paul invited Lisa to come forward and take it herself. Onlookers speculated that the priest might be joking with the girl, but more people are puzzled. Is he testing the girl's confidence? Lisa struggled to turn her wheelchair, trying to follow Paul's instructions. Everyone watched Paul's serious expression, and they gradually became confused. They doubted that the priest was intentionally teasing the girl. They urged him to stop, although her mother firmly believed it was no joke. Lisa seemed to sense some unusual feeling. Then she slowly attempted to stand up. She actually succeeded. Lisa walked slowly up to the priest. She took up the sacred object. Paul's actions shocked everyone present. They looked on in disbelief at what was unfolding before them. People began to suspect that Paul was a messenger of God. Lisa's parents immediately took their daughter to see Dr. Green. After an examination, Dr. Green confirmed that Lisa, now it's just a spinal injury, and there's no serious problem. Lisa just needed to recover gradually, and she would be able to walk like anyone else. In fact, Dr. Green was also surprised by Lisa's sudden improvement. After all, she had almost completely lost her ability to move before. After the couple left, Dr. Green returned to the house. She found that her mother was unexpectedly not in bed. Dr. Green hurried upstairs to check on her. She discovered her mother in a room on the second floor. This left Dr. Green in disbelief. Because her mother had been bedridden for many years, she couldn't get out of bed at all. Since Paul's visit, her mother seemed to have received some kind of gift. From then on, the people in the town came here because of its reputation. Seeking God's grace from Paul, the nun reminded everyone to stay calm and believe that Paul would bring a glimmer of hope. The nun outside urged everyone to be quiet and just believe in Paul as he would bring them hope. Jack later sought out Paul as well. Although he himself was a materialist, Paul seemed to understand his predicament, thinking Jack would ask for his help. Jack instead posed a direct question. He doubted that Lisa's recovery wasn't a miracle, but rather the result of her own healing. It just happened to coincide with a miraculous moment, which made the believers take it as truth. Paul seemed somewhat surprised. He candidly stated that he did not seek superficial praise. He only wished to help others sincerely. Regarding Jack's inner struggle, he could not provide a clear answer, because even he could not explain. This series of events, Jack longed for divine protection, he hoping that a miracle could bring him redemption. But the materialistic view of reality made him doubt whether all of this was just coincidence. Nevertheless, the townspeople still held high hopes for the new priest. More people believed he was a messenger of God. The number of people attending mass at the church was increasing. Jack also tried to integrate himself into this community. In his spare time, Paul would still go to Dr. Green's house to hold mass for the elderly. Surprisingly, the elderly woman who once needed assistance was now able to go up and downstairs by herself. Recovered Lisa and Jack's brother began a romance, and Jack also personally prepared a small bed for Eileen's child. Her parents were very happy, and they even wanted to give Aaron a brother. Life seemed to be moving in a beautiful direction. However, during a mass, Father Paul suddenly fainted and collapsed. People were thrown into chaos in an instant. They speculated that the priest had overworked himself. When the priest regained consciousness, the church was empty. He walked alone into the confessional. Paul confessed to God, admitting that he had lied to the villagers, but all of it was out of goodwill toward them. In fact, 
Paul was actually the old priest. Plot. He once traveled with a tour group from the diocese to the holy city of Jerusalem for a pilgrimage. At that time, he was older, and dementia often caused him to lose his way during the journey. People around him thought Plot was simply unfamiliar with the new environment. He struggled internally at that time because Plot was afraid of revealing his condition. He will lose his mission as a priest. But Plot knew that life was coming to an end. So he planned to stay on land after the pilgrimage to seek medical help until the very last moment of his life. However, on the journey to Damascus, an accident caused him to become separated from the group. Pruitt was completely unaware. He found himself caught in a storm. Plot was lost in the vast desert. And in that desolate place, he discovered an ancient ruin. To escape the storm, Plot entered a deep cave. As he struck a match to light up the surroundings, Plot saw a pair of bright eyes in horror. Light the match for the second time, a mysterious figure appeared. The figure directly bit Pruitt's throat. Fear and pain washed over him in an instant. Perhaps it's because was bitten, and mind was confused, and Plot mistakenly perceived him as an angel. He instinctively prayed for protection from the angel. The figure unexpectedly slashed its wrist, allowing him to drink the blood. It felt like some strange form of redemption. When Plot reached the cave entrance, he discovered he had regained his youth. Though the creature before him was far from the image of angels in people's minds, it granted him rebirth. From that moment on, Plot regarded it as an angel. Although he feared the sunlight, Plot understood that his fragile hometown needed him, so he carefully placed it in a box, and Plot took it back to his hometown. He changed his name to Paul, with a sense of remorse toward God. He confessed to this lie, but all of it was out of concern for the townspeople. Paul hoped they could be reborn just like him. Since Paul returned home, he will take the blood of the vampire angel into a vessel known as the Holy Grail. This scene was accidentally witnessed by Jack's brother. However, he had no idea what this unknown ritual was about, and he did not know what Paul was doing. The arrival of the priest brought hope to the people. Those sacred artifacts will be used later. The communion rituals of the believers. Aaron visited Dr. Green with hopeful feelings. Pay attention to the health status of the fetus. After repeated examinations by Dr. Green, she delivered a shocking message to Aaron. Her baby was gone. Aaron was confused and bewildered. Dr. Green was equally astonished. She decided to send samples to a hospital on the mainland for further examination. Dr. Green hoped to find out the reason for the baby's disappearance. Currently, the preliminary judgment was that it might be a miscarriage. Aaron found it hard to accept this fact. And Dr. Green could only do her best to offer comfort. Lisa, who had been trapped in a wheelchair for years, miraculously regained the use of her legs. She walked into Big Joe's house. Lisa's legs back then were because of Joe. The latter accidentally hit Lisa, which caused her paralysis. Joe felt very guilty about this. At this moment, Lisa mentioned the past and expressed her forgiveness for the consequences he had caused her. Lisa hopes Joe can be freed from guilt. Joe was moved to tears upon hearing this. He knew that his only regret in life was having hurt the woman before him. Seeing Lisa stand up again filled him with hope and it deeply touched him. Meanwhile, Jack sought out Paul again. He found Joe sitting there, a former staunch materialist, but witnessed Lisa's miraculous recovery. Joe's faith started to transform. Paul encouraged them to relax, slowly quit the bad habit of excessive drinking. However, just after the two left, Paul's body began to show signs of distress. It seemed that something ominous was preparing to act within his abdomen. The scene shifted to Sister Bailey's house. Lisa's parents are sitting here. They came to thank Father Paul. The latter pushed open the door and walked in. He suddenly collapsed to the floor. Then Paul began to convulse, and a strange red liquid began to flow from the corner of his mouth. Everyone was shocked by this scene. The situation continued until Paul fell silent. Lisa's father stepped forward to check on him and stated that the priest's condition was serious. Looking again, they saw that Paul's eyes were filled with red veins. Just when everyone thought Paul was beyond help, he suddenly woke up. The people began to trust God's gifts even more. After everyone left, Bailey came into Paul's room with some food. This nun was almost fanatically devoted to God, so she had great faith in Paul. Unexpectedly, just as she was about to pull back the curtains, Paul stopped her. Bailey felt that the priest was acting a bit strangely. When she was leaving, Bailey repeatedly assured the priest that she would be one of his most trusted followers. She hoped he would reveal his true identity. In this delicate moment, Bailey vaguely sensed that Paul might be the former priest Plutt. She hoped Paul could prove himself in some way, which would surely attract more people to join them. After Bailey left, 
Paul also intended to validate himself, he tried to expose his hand to the sunlight. Unfortunately, he suffered severe burns. Once, Paul could move freely in the sunlight. But now, his body's special condition, forcing him to avoid sunlight, and even triggered uncontrollable physical reactions, he clutched the crucifix tightly, praying for God's forgiveness, only to find that the crucifix deepened his pain. The blood seeping from his wounds awakened a deep desire within him. He began to suck his own blood. As night fell, Paul stepped out of his house. He tried to touch the night air, and the darkness seemed to cause him no discomfort. Perhaps he will have to adapt to being active in the dark. Paul visited Dr. Green's residence again. He found the doctor's mother. This elderly woman had appeared 20 years younger due to long-term consumption of vampiric blood. Although this change brought benefits, it also signified that she was about to become a vampire. The woman recognized Paul, and they held each other's hands. This revealed a secret. Green was actually the child of Father Plutt and the woman. Out of fear of identity exposure, they chose to keep this fact a secret. After Paul returned, his primary wish was to help the woman return to her former life. Meanwhile, Aaron found Jack. They confided in each other about their suffering. Though fate had brought them back together in their hometown, it drew their hearts closer. However, when Paul returned home, his physical condition deteriorated. There is very little vampire blood left, and the angel who had once promised to help him had also vanished. Paul felt a strong hunger pang. He rushed outside, calling for the angel. Paul received no response. He returned helplessly. Paul drank the last of the life-saving blood he had. His heart was filled with confusion and struggle. At this critical moment, Big Joe appeared at the door. He was deeply troubled by quitting drinking. Joe sought help from the priest. He sensed something unusual about the priest. Joe intended to leave, but the priest insisted he come in, entering the of the house. Joe was surprised to find the young plot, looked strikingly similar to Father Paul. He suspected that Paul might be the priest's secret child. Feeling awkward, Joe plans to temporarily avoid it. However, Paul called out to him. He urged Joe to relax in the name of God. Paul even asked Joe to come forward and embrace him. At this moment, Paul could no longer resist the temptation of blood. He could even feel the blood flowing in Joe's carotid artery. He crazily wanted to attack Joe. As Joe struggled, he accidentally bumped into the corner of the table. Blood immediately stained the floor. Paul could no longer suppress his inner urges. He frantically drank the blood. The next morning, the believers in the church waited for Paul to arrive for a long time. Bailey had no choice but to go to Paul's home to find him. When she entered the room, the sight before her shocked her. Joe had already become a cold corpse, while the priest cowered in the corner. Surprisingly, this nun felt no fear. Instead, she approached the priest. The nun suggested helping him change his clothes, and then going to the church to officiate a mass. Bailey noticed Paul's palm, which showed signs of having been burned. She decided to keep Paul here for now. Bailey went to handle the follow-up matters. Clearly, the nun's faith was too fanatical, causing her to overlook these signs. After returning to the church, Bailey guided the people in self-prayer. Then she called over two trusted individuals. One was Lisa's father, and the other was a captain who frequently traveled to the mainland. With her persuasive words, Bailey successfully convinced them to believe. The priest had been harmed by the jealousy of demons. She instructed them to wrap the body in blankets and take it for proper handling. Faith might be able to reshape people's perceptions. After careful consideration, the two began to execute the plan. Meanwhile, Aaron found a doctor on the mainland. They had completed the examination of the blood samples. The female doctor delivered a shocking piece of news. According to the medical report, Aaron showed no signs of pregnancy in her body. She recalled being in the clinic in her hometown. Aaron once heard the beating of the fetal heart clearly. She had also undergone an ultrasound examination. And even the town's DR Green could confirm this. However, the doctor insisted that their diagnosis was completely accurate. Aaron was currently in good health. She was neither pregnant, nor had she experienced a miscarriage. She was a vibrant young woman. This left her feeling confused. In the corner of the church, Paul paced anxiously. He longed for the arrival of the angel. Now the communion had been completely used up, and he feared that misfortune was imminent. Thus, Paul urgently needed the angel's blood. At that moment, a mysterious figure suddenly appeared. Paul relaxed his mood. He immediately informed the figure that the communion was empty. The angel asked him to remain silent. Then he walked straight forward. Paul knelt devoutly on the ground, waiting for the angel to grant him communion. Meanwhile, Jack walked into the church. He happened to witness this bizarre scene.
Paul slowly approached him. He saw the angel bite into Jack's throat. Then he closed the door. The scene shifted. Green looked at his mother in disbelief. The latter became even younger than themselves. His mother suggested. They attend the morning mass together. At this moment, the villagers gathered outside the church. The captain and Lisa's father told everyone. That father Paul, due to health reasons, would hold the mass in the evening instead. Just then, an unexpected sight appeared. Dr. Green and her mother joined the crowd as well. The crowd watched as the elderly woman regained her youth. Lisa's mother is emotionally agitated, as if her husband have already revealed the priest's secret to her. Now everyone witnessed the miracle taking place, which was undoubtedly the most convincing evidence. Meanwhile, Aaron, having been unable to contact Jack, went directly to Jack's home. Jack's mother also didn't know where he had gone. In fact, Jack hadn't returned since last night. Aaron began to panic. She went to the dock to ask Jack's brother, do you know Jack's whereabouts? But the brother didn't know either. He also informed their father about it. The father was very angry, in his view, since Jack had that car accident, and he had become slow in his thinking. Jack spent all day not working. He knows only to wander around. Aaron couldn't find Jack. She had no choice but to go to the police station. Aaron saw the sheriff as her last hope in finding Jack. She mentioned that she had seen Jack before and that he had suicidal tendencies due to his psychological trauma. The sheriff also felt something unusual in the town recently, as there had been multiple cases of people going missing. Just in the morning, Bill's wife from the town came to file a report, claiming her husband had been missing for several days. He was the man who had been attacked in the abandoned house. Dr. Green and her mother arrived in the evening for the mass. The mother, filled with longing for her loved one, her yearned to come and see Paul once more. Paul saw that everyone has arrived. He stepped up to the podium. Paul's words were markedly different from usual. He warned the crowd that they might face the moment when they need to step forward. He hinted that if they followed his guidance, there was still a chance for resurrection. After Paul finished his speech, he left the place. Dr. Green's mother realized that the priest in front of, it seems like he's no longer the person she's familiar with. After Paul left, mother privately found daughter. She warned her daughter to stay away from this place. This statement clearly contradicted traditional beliefs. Meanwhile, on the other side, Aaron is immersed in a dreamland. She was suddenly awakened by a knock at the door. Upon opening the door, she found it was Jack. Aaron was a bit angry. She questioned Jack about why he had disappeared all day. Where had he gone? Jack reminded her the promise they made when they left here. That's to take a boat together and enjoy the sunrise over the sea. He pleaded with Aaron to accompany him to the sea now. The two of them rode a small boat, and Jack wanted to tell Aaron a story, though she might think he was just rambling. The day before, Jack had his throat bitten by a vampire, but Paul not only saved him, he helped Jack realign his head. After drinking the vampire's blood, Jack had also become a vampire. He had been very frightened at the time, though Paul tried to reassure him. Jack still ran away. He looked at his burned arm. Paul said, can talk to Jack about these things and explain the reasons behind it all. He said he had already died and come back to life and that this was the gift of the angel. Jack looked at Paul before him. He is Father Plot. Who is that mysterious figure? The priest explained that it was the angel. Sister Bailey happened to arrive just then. Paul suggested conducting a test for Jack. He had Jack sit on a stool and then hold him down. Bailey slowly approached. At that moment, Jack felt a surge of impulse. He realized he seemed to be changing, craving blood like a monster. However, the priest reassured him that it was the power granted by the angel, making him youthful, strong, and pure in spirit. Yet, when the priest asked about his feelings, Jack only felt anger. This annoyed Paul somewhat. He decided to provide Jack with ideological education. Paul tried to persuade him to accept his new identity. After a heated dialogue, Jack ultimately yielded. But inside, he was in deep turmoil. He realized that immortality came at the cost of others' suffering. This had been his inner conflict for many years. Soon after, Bailey brought a bowl of blood. They want to see Jack stand on their side. Jack could not resist the temptation of blood. He picked up the cup and drank it down. For a mortal, such a temptation is irresistible for anyone. As night fell, Jack strolled outside through the unique perspective of a vampire. Jack saw different faces of the world. The light seemed to have been ignited, emanating a strange halo. He arrived at the seaside, where the stars and the glow of the sea intertwined. 
like a captivating painting. After the story concluded, Jack confessed to Aaron, hoping she would take a boat to the mainland and never come back. He knew Aaron would not comply, so Jack chose to let her see it with her own eyes. Although it appears that he is very selfish, but he merely hoped that Aaron could leave this place. In the final moments of life, Jack declared that he had always loved Aaron. As soon as he finished speaking, the sky began to brighten. Jack started burning in the sunlight. This scene left Aaron stunned. Jack used his life to reveal the truth about the existence of vampires. He pleaded with Aaron to leave the town, but she was deeply attached to the town. Aaron had lived here since she was a child. She then decided to return to the town for help. Meanwhile, after Jack's parents woke up, they found the letter left by Jack before he left. The father was anxious. He immediately took the letter and found Father Paul. Paul and others were secretly discussing matters for Easter. Father presented Jack's letter. He is worried that his son may have had some problems recently. From the words in the letter, his son's state was unusual. He seemed to be mentally unstable. Paul knew well that Jack might not return. He tried to comfort Jack's father and stated that prior to this, he had a communication with Jack once. He tried to help resolve Jack's inner turmoil. Paul advised him not to overthink things and to have faith in God. On the other side, Aaron sought help from Dr. Green. She told her everything that happened with Jack, though Aaron suspected she might be hallucinating. Dr. Green said she was willing to believe it because she had also noticed some strange occurrences. Green led Aaron into her laboratory. The incident of Jack spontaneously combusting in sunlight made Green more certain of her suspicions. Her mother was becoming younger and younger now, which was unprecedented. Green took his mother's blood, placed under sunlight, and it immediately began to burn. Meanwhile triggering the fire alarm in the lab, Green's mother thought there was danger, and hurried over to check the situation. The old woman now looked about the same age as her. Then everyone began to discuss the matter. Green put forth a theory. She believed this phenomenon was similar to a rare blood disorder called erythropoietic protoporphyria, which causes patients to be extremely sensitive to light, and may be injured by direct sunlight, often accompanied by severe anemia. However, he believed the townspeople did not have this condition. Green speculated, it may originate from the same type of disease. The townspeople might have been attacked by a virus or parasite. This organism seemed capable of repairing damaged or aging cells, but at the same time, it also brought a fanatical symptom, their excessive thirst for iron in their blood. Initially, the mutation might have had minimal impact, but as time passed, and physiological changes occurred, its effects became increasingly pronounced. Green explained that she had tested her mother's and Aaron's blood, and when exposed to sunlight, that abnormal substance will burn rapidly, finally restored to normal blood. Aaron expressed confusion. Is there this substance in her blood too? Green mentioned that during Aaron's pregnancy checkups, blood samples had been kept. She believed others in the town might also be experiencing the same situation. Green added that, although her mother's and Aaron's blood was primarily composed of normal red blood cells, Jack's blood, however, there is a high probability that the mutated components have been excessive, which was why he could not withstand the sunlight. Aaron asked with concern, if a pregnant woman is infected with this substance, what impact will it have on the fetus? Green understood her worries, but she regretfully informed her. This substance will consider foreign substances as a threat, and the fetus is likely to become the target of attack as a result. Aaron felt a deep sorrow upon hearing this. Her mother quickly asked if there was a solution, but Green honestly admitted that she had tried many times and had not yet found a way to solve it. After leaving Green's house, Aaron went to Jack's mother again. She informed her of Jack's misfortune and her suspicions. However, Jack's mother found it hard to believe, her thinking that Aaron was not mentally stable. Immediately, she drove Eileen away. Green mustered her courage and found the sheriff. She provided a detailed description regarding the experiences of his mother and Jack. Given Jack's poor reputation and the lack of solid evidence, the sheriff is skeptical about this. Under helplessness, they had to go to the dock with their group. They discovered that the boats connecting the islands to the mainland had disappeared. Someone intended to obstruct the townspeople from leaving because tonight was the Easter Mass. As night deepened, Lisa's father and the bearded captain even shut down the signal tower. They aimed to prevent any accidents before the ceremony. Aaron and her friends were trying to find a way to escape this bloodthirsty island. However, the distance was quite far, and ordinary boats were incapable of achieving this goal. Aaron decided to attend the mass, though she did not know what would happen. But Aaron couldn't let Jack die like this. Soon after, 
Bailey led a group of believers, in a solemn ceremony, to welcome this sacred night. Aaron exchanged a glance with Green and the others, and they decided to enter the church to investigate, so they blended into the line. As more and more people joined, the entire line moved toward the church. When the crowd arrived at the church, Paul first apologized to everyone. He clarified, that Father Plutt was not recuperating on land, but it was blessed by angels, which had fully restored him, and made him young again. He then confessed to everyone, that he was Father Plutt. He asked the crowd to forgive his lies. Paul's confession did not cause shock. Aaron looked at these people in disbelief. The bearded captain strode forward, and Bailey, who was receiving the communion, came right behind him. She picked up a cup of vampire blood, and there seems to be some kind of poison on the table. He mixed the poison with the vampire blood. Once everyone drank, they would all achieve eternal life. Paul intends to do it tonight. Let everyone become vampires. After the captain drank that cup of blood, he immediately collapsed and started convulsing. Paul tried to calm the person on the ground while telling the others that a miracle was about to happen. The sheriff witnessed all of this and he found it hard to accept. The sheriff decided to leave with his son. Meanwhile, the sheriff noticed a figure standing at the door. Paul claimed that this was the angel representing God. The latter would bring blessings to everyone. Then, vampire under the shock of everyone, he slowly walked towards the podium and unfurled his massive wings. Paul seemed to be going crazy, praising the body and tail of the angel. At this moment, the bearded man gradually woke up. Paul became even more excited. He shouted that the miracle had arrived. Paul urged everyone to eagerly join in. Lisa's parents disregarded their daughter's fear. They joined the ranks of distributing toxic blood. They even personally handed a cup to their daughter. Some people were forced to accept it before they had fully realized what was happening. Paul emphasized that this was a gift from God. As long as they had a bit of courage, they could achieve eternity and everlasting life. The sheriff could no longer endure it. He tried to take his son away from there, but this time his son broke free from his arm. Paul hurried over pleading with the sheriff not to take away the child's chance for self-redemption. The sheriff immediately drew his weapon, vowing to protect his son at all costs, but was stopped by others. The weapon was lost as well. He watched as his son drank the poisonous blood. Then everyone followed suit. Aaron and Green tried to stop this farce, but the people's will to pursue immortality burned like fire. The church was instantly plunged into chaos. Green's mother could not accept what the former lover looks like now. She picked up a weapon and pulled the trigger at Paul. The latter fell to the ground in response. Seeing this, Bailey ordered the bearded captain to close the church doors. Bailey approached the sheriff, intending to enact punishment in the name of God. However, the bearded captain's hands were stained with blood, and the bloodthirsty impulse quietly emerged, as those who drank the poisoned blood gradually revived. Lisa's mother, after being resurrected, in her eyes, the world was already a different scene, as the mother and daughter embraced. She heard the blood flowing in her daughter's veins, and her father revealed thanks to the girl. It was evident that, after their transformation, they could not suppress their instincts. They had become vampires driven solely by bloodlust. They began to attack ordinary humans. The church doors were tightly locked, and Aaron and others were forced to retreat. Jack's brother struggled to pull Lisa away, and the father stepped forward to shield them. Only a few of them escaped into a small room at the back of the church, and the church is already a living hell. Aaron accidentally saw Bailey's figure, hiding here like them, though she could hardly hide her inner fear. Bailey still expressed her dissatisfaction with Aaron and the others. She kept rambling on about the glory of the angel. This was truly hypocritical. Aaron no longer indulged her. She shot her dead on the spot. Then the group found the back door. They escaped through there. Just as everyone left, Bailey suddenly sat up. Her sparkling eyes indicated that she had already consumed vampire blood. Bailey entered the church interior. It was already a scene of devastation. She ordered the bearded captain to open the church doors. The latter, however, stated that the priest had orders. No one is allowed to open the door until he wakes up. In fact, Paul was not dead, but Bailey was no longer satisfied with her identity as a nun. She told the captain that those who strayed from God's will must be punished. She then expressed her respect to the priest. Bailey promised to continue praising the priest's glory and the angel's gifts. The scene shifted. Green's mother suddenly sat up after being killed by a vampire. Due to long-term use of communion, she has become a member of the vampire community. Green's mother entered the church. She saw Father Paul sitting on the podium. 
he seemed to be questioning himself, whether he had truly brought redemption, and the gospel to everyone, and all the residents of the town have turned into vampires, having long since left this place, they are preparing to spread the gospel, to all parts of the world, a bloody massacre was quietly unfolding, the demons were attacking the innocent townsfolk, and they had almost lost their self-awareness, Jack's father witnessed all of this on the street, though he too had become a vampire, but he doesn't want to do something like that himself, Aaron and the other survivors were hiding in a room, they are discussing ways to leave this place, Jack's brother said he had a canoe, but it couldn't hold too many people, suddenly, Aaron realized a problem, if the fishermen from the town tried to escape to the mainland by boat, it could trigger a disaster, therefore, they decided to first destroy the fishermen's boats, and destroy it together with the church, but unexpectedly, a ball of kerosene was suddenly thrown in, it turned out, that Bailey and Big Beard arrived outside the house, Bailey proclaimed, that she was there to bring the gospel to everyone, she pleaded with everyone not to resist, to cover for everyone and leave first, Jack's mother decided to stay behind alone, after the others evacuated, she stepped outside with a small knife, Jack's mother mocked Bailey, as a weak and selfish person, then she ended her life with the knife, the two bloodthirsty creatures wanted to mock her in return, but they found, that the other was not giving them any chance, they watched the blood flowing from her neck, and their bloodlust drove them to drink her blood, meanwhile, Paul expressed to his lover, that when he was reborn, he finally felt he had found true hope, perhaps there would be no more death in the future, he wants his lover to regain health, he also wants to keep the residents of the small town away, from the troubles of diseases, it was then that Paul had hidden the truth all along, and had even deceived everyone, he firmly believed he was doing good, however, reality did not seem to align with his wishes, he began to doubt whether his choices were right, Paul received comfort from his lover, the latter reminded him, that children's growth and our aging, is a natural law of life, we cannot interfere with the natural laws, after hearing this, Paul finally understood, the miracle he was pursuing, was merely another form of life's continuation, meanwhile, Aaron and the others arrived at the dock, they poured fuel onto each fishing boat, and set them ablaze, they must not let any vampire reach the mainland, in the chaos, Lisa and Jack's brother hid in a room, they unexpectedly discovered that, that angel is sucking human blood, Lisa shot directly at it, but she found the vampire completely unresponsive, the bloodlust seemed to have surpassed everything, in desperation, the two poured fuel onto him, they chose to burn it alive, as the flames illuminated the warehouse, accompanied by a shrill wail, the monster fled the scene, in a warehouse near the church, Bailey had prepared a bed for everyone, she had instructed the bearded captain, to set the whole town on fire, so as to gather everyone to this place, she plans on the following evening, lead the townspeople to the mainland, and then they would spread the gospel there, as the church bells rang, the people who had turned into vampires arrived, Bailey discovered, that the priest was safe and sound, she wanted Paul to continue being their guide, Paul has already changed his mind, and he firmly refused Bailey's request, Paul hoped everyone could think calmly, and abandon such crazy actions, these words made Bailey very angry, after all, it was you who preached the benefits of the gospel everywhere, she began to doubt, that the priest had betrayed their original intention, so she decided to personally lead everyone, to hide in the church before dawn, then, when night fell, they would head to the mainland, what she did not expect was that, the bearded captain brought bad news, all the boats had turned to ashes, and the way to the mainland had been destroyed, but Bailey felt, that everyone still had hope, there would definitely be boats passing in a few days, they could leave then, it wouldn't be too late, she tried to calm the terrified people, especially those who drink blood, people who are filled with guilt in their hearts, at this moment, her primary task was to stabilize everyone's emotions, just as the priest entered the church hall, he saw his daughter Green standing there, Paul apologized with deep remorse, he had intended to recognize his daughter as soon as possible, then Paul urged Green to evacuate quickly, saying means he will handle it here, at that moment, a gunshot shattered the silence, the bearded man shot Green with a gun in his hand, Paul watched as his daughter fell to the ground, and he rushed toward the captain without hesitation, Paul grabbed him by the throat, Green's mother quickly asked what had happened, seeing her daughter lying on the ground, life or death uncertain, Paul was extremely anxious, he hurriedly tried to use blood to revive Green, but she immediately spat out the blood, perhaps it was a rejection of becoming a monster, or hatred towards her father for causing all of this, Green quickly fell silent, Paul and Green's mother were heartbroken, they set the church on fire, the two left with Green's body in their arms. Meanwhile, Bailey discovered the sheriff pouring fuel, 
In a nearby warehouse, she immediately shot him in the thigh. Then Bailey loudly announced to everyone, Sheriff, this is to obstruct their retreat. Bailey was about to judge the sheriff. When Aaron suddenly walked out of the warehouse, she held a lighter, ready to burn the place down. Aaron was ambushed by a vampire. The vampire pinned her to the ground and bit her neck. The sheriff's son witnessed this scene. After a mental struggle, he finally ignited the warehouse. In an instant, flames shot up to the sky. The town's houses were engulfed in flames. People had nowhere to go. At that moment, the sheriff spoke up. He told Bailey that the sunlight would serve as a judge. It would tell everyone what is good and what is bad. Bailey lost her patience. She aimed at him and pulled the trigger. Aaron while monsters are sucking blood, she slashed its wings with a knife. As the flames consumed everything, the crowd is choosing to leave here one after another. When the morning light next illuminated the land, the townspeople might all perish. And before that, everyone chose to be with their families. After the vampire had drunk its fill of blood, its wings were already scorched and battered. Yet even so, it still flew away. Aaron lay on the ground, reflecting on the question Jack had once asked her. What happens when people leave this world? Aaron answered him. At that time, the cells in the body would begin to slowly wither and die. The brain will therefore significantly increase the activity of neurons. People might feel lonely and afraid, but they might not feel that way at all. Because in those brief moments or seconds, we would be using all our strength to reflect on our past lives. In the final moments, we would all turn to dust, returning to nature. There is where everything begins. Perhaps others would feel sad and heartbroken, but everything will be forgotten with the passage of time. Life is like a shooting star in the river of history, appearing, shining, and then leaving continuously. It seems to repeat forever like this. Perhaps long ago, Jack agreed with Eileen's answer, which is why he later burned his own life, to help Erin stay true to her original intention. At this moment, a glimmer of sunlight appeared on the horizon. People seem to have awakened. Eternity is never the meaning of existence in life. Love is. Everyone stayed by their family's side, quietly waiting for the arrival of death. Although Bailey is unwilling to accept it, she could no longer resist fate at this point. The sunlight had reached the island. People's bodies began to burst into flames, slowly starting to burn. Thus, the story of the series Midnight Mass comes to an end. Midnight Mass premiered in 2021. It is a show that requires careful appreciation. Not just a typical horror show, but rather a discussion of humanity and divinity, death and redemption. In today's apocalyptic era, religion is no longer what it used to be. If God could show miracles, the devil can do so as well. Angels resembling Lucifer. That's it utilize people's beliefs. Human nature is distorted by twisted doctrines. The emergence of religious beliefs is for the purpose of point out the meaning of birth to people and provide comfort in death. When the end of days arrives, true faith also gives people composure and redemption in the face of death. All existence is a vibration of energy. Life is a dream within the universe. When death arrives, it will conclude with the grandest dream. After watching this series, you will feel that the benchmark for American horror films is Mike Flanagan, who is also the director of this show. I recommend everyone to check out the original. If you like my channel, please click subscribe.